two, one. Welcome to the Capital Gains Tax Solutions Podcast, where we believe most high net worth individuals and those who help them struggle with clarifying their capital gains tax deferral options. Not having a clear plan is the enemy and using a proven tax deferral strategy, such as the Deferred Sales Trust, is the best way for you to grow your wealth. I'm your host, Brett Swartz. In each episode, I am joined by some of the best, the best real estate, financial, and wealth minds in the world where they share their ideas, deal stories, and inspiration so together we can make complex tax deferral strategies simple and passive income plans achievable. I'm excited about our next guest. He's the Director of Acquisitions at Sequoia Equities, a good friend of mine, and also um, someone that I've been personally invested with um, into multifamily investment uh, syndications. He's an experienced executive and he's demonstrated a, a, a history of working in really just the commercial real estate industry, especially in multifamily. Um, in fact, Sequoia Equities, um, who he's the Director of Acquisitions for, currently owns and manages approximately about 13,000 units uh, across California, Oregon, Washington, Arizona, and Nevada, with over about 1.5 billion in acquisition experience in the last decade alone. Uh, he and his team um, at Sequoia and Associates have pushed the total AUM to about 4 billion. Please welcome to the show with me, Eric Peterson. Hey, Eric, how you doing? Hello, Brett. Great to see you. Thanks for inviting me on. Absolutely. Would you give our listeners a little bit more about your uh, background and your current focus? Absolutely. You know, I've been fortunate to be in the, in the commercial real estate industry since 2001. Uh, and we've been uh, very focused on the, the apartment segment, the multifamily segment specifically. And uh, we've been, uh, you know, following the, the various roller coaster ride that, uh, that real estate has uh, provided uh, for many people over the years. And uh, it is very much a, a boots on the ground industry it is a relationship based industry, which is uh, the reasons I, uh, I've fallen in love with the, the, uh, the asset class and the business. Beautiful. And I can't wait to dive into the uh, on the full interview. This is just kind of our teaser interview um, in regards to just that amount of volume and that amount of deals and that amount of scale with Sequoia and your full story. Um, but before we uh, go to the full interview um, here on the next episode, I want to focus on this one big um, challenge that a lot of our listeners have um it's, and i want to i want to put it into the multi-family syndicator uh, space as well which is you've been in which is this what's the biggest challenge or frustration you've had when it comes to capital gains tax deferral options um as it pertains to multi-family syndications you know absolutely um so uh as a, as a, most people try to invest for tax deferral reasons for depreciation reasons as well as cash flow um, over time, there's a strategy, obviously, creating capital events uh, within their portfolio of selling an asset. Uh, for many investors, if you know that 1031 challenge of rolling that deal to the next asset is uh, is tough. The time limitations, uh, periods uh, of COVID that we're in right now, many parties got stuck where the volume of opportunities out in the marketplace uh, dried up. Uh, so um, there's that's probably one of the bigger challenges. Uh, there's the same swap till you drop uh, in the uh, the 1031 world, and uh, there's really not a great exit strategy uh, within uh, within syndicators uh, outside of uh, an upreit or other more challenging uh, options. Excellent. So if someone calls you and they're in a 1031, Eric, um, what do you typically say? Um, First question. Second question, when you're actually selling these assets, um, it, are you in Sequoia, are you guys exchanging or are you typically just paying the investor and, and having them pay their tax? Yeah. So, I mean, I think uh, when we have investors that come in with us uh, under a tick platform or as straight as an LPs, um, you know, they, uh, they have, we often find out, well, how much time do you have left? Uh, in your exchange, have you are you under contract? Have you already sold your asset? Where are you at in that process to see if it's uh, we're able to support them um, relative to what we have in our current pipeline? Two is um, you know the 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 ten thirty one exchange uh, can be limiting for that party as they you know may make difficult choices or be forced to make a, an exchange uh, into an asset that's not as uh, as ideal. So. We, we really try to uh, try to redirect that attention um, into a really favorable long-term uh, investment opportunity uh, going forward. Excellent. And then as far as when you when you do sell, are you guys exchanging that entire um, interest into something else typically? Or, or are you guys- do. So or? historically, we use 1031s uh, mm -hmm. quite a bit from that perspective. Uh, it is uh, continuing to, 
which can continue the business model of continuing to own a uh, multifamily. Uh, so for our, on our end, that's what we, we tend to focus on, but as it uh, pertains to uh, going forward basis, uh, there's, uh, we're always interested to know what other options are out there, uh, which is, you know, one reason I think we connected uh, many years ago. Absolutely. And for those who don't know, um, I originally started at Marcus and Milch. I was at Cold Call Sequoia to try to sell them apartment buildings or try to get their listings. I'm still pretty young in the business and uh, never actually uh, did a deal with, with the big guns there, but I but, uh, had a chance to get to know Eric over the years. And then now Eric and um, um, also owns and operates properties um, as well, which I've had the pleasure of being a, a passive investor in, in, in his deals. Um, that being said, Eric, for those who want to get connected with you like right now, uh, what's it and Sequoia? What's the best place for them to find you? You can find me right at E Peterson at sequoiaequities.com. We, uh, you can look us up online at sequoiaequities.com. Uh, you know, we are a, a third party management company that also focuses on acquisitions and ownership for, uh, for our investors. So if there's uh, owners out there that are struggling uh, with their management end, we would happy to consult with them on uh, how we can help them uh, as well as owners that are looking to uh, to exit or migrate as well as investors we kind of uh, you know there's a, a statement out there that's probably overutilized a little bit we are but we are fully vertically integrated as a company from an acquisitions management construction management investor relations uh, the gamut so but you can reach me at e peterson at sequoiaequities.com beautiful hey reach out to eric and uh and look for the full episode to drop and if you are being challenged right now with some capital gains tax deferral um, limitations, um, whether it be you wanted to save a failed 1031 exchange or whether it be you're not sure how to sell your syndication now and without getting hammered by tax, um, go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com. We just did a $20 million deal in Vegas, a $16.7 million deal in Phoenix um, for multifamily syndicators who wanted a different option and um, they used it. And you can hear more about their story. Just go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com. And look for the full episode here to drop soon with Eric and I and hearing, um, uh, hearing, the, hearing his full story. Thanks so much. Take care.